So have you seen this incredible photograph of the sun, the highest resolution image ever taken of the sun, and it was taken from a ground-based observatory in Hawaii. It's the Daniel K. Anue uh, solar uh, instrument, and it is unbelievable. And we've talked about all these enormous monster telescopes that are coming, but this one just kind of snuck through our radar, and yet here we are. We've got first light and many more amazing observations to come. You're looking at the highest resolution image that has ever been taken of our sun using the brand new Daniel K. Inoue Solar Telescope in Maui. These lighter regions are convection cells, blobs of hot gas the size of Texas, which have carried heat from deep below the surface of the sun and releasing it into space. The darker lines are cooler regions where the material is sinking back down into the sun. This image is just a demonstration of the incredible power of this four meter observatory, which will join NASA's Parker Solar Probe and ESA's Solar Orbiter in ushering in the golden age of solar astronomy. Astronomers are learning more and more about how activity on the sun can affect life here on Earth. There are the beautiful auroras that we can see in the sky at higher latitudes, and who wouldn't want more advanced notice when you're gonna be able to see this kind of sky show? Look at that. Look at above it. But the sun is also capable of releasing solar storms that can disrupt our increasingly connected electrical grid. Electronics here on Earth and satellites in space are vulnerable to the waves of charged particles hurled into space by the sun. In fact, astronomers now estimate that a destructive solar storm happens every 25 years or so. As humanity explores space, we'll need to keep an eye on the sun. During intense solar storms, astronauts can receive a deadly dose of radiation in just a couple of hours. I'm not going to say that the sun is a deadly laser, but it does contain ongoing thermonuclear reactions, so it's best we keep a really, really good eye on it. Speaking of good eyes, meet the Daniel K. Inoue Solar Telescope, recently built on Haleakala, the tallest mountain on Maui at an altitude of 3,055 meters above sea level. Measuring 4.24 meters across, this telescope is capable of revealing features one third the size of any previous solar observatory, capturing several images every second. In this image, you're looking at the boiling plasma that wells up from inside the sun. This is the only way the heat generated in the core of the sun can actually escape through the stellar material. You can see a similar effect when you boil water on the stove or make oatmeal or yes, a lava lamp. These are known as convective cells. As the material releases its energy into space, it sinks back below the surface along the darker lanes. They're still insanely hot, just less hot than the centers of the cells. As this plasma rises and falls, the sun's magnetic field twists and turns, getting tangled up. Then the fields reconfigure, creating a flash of radiation and hurling material out into space. Astronomers learned decades ago that the sun is constantly blowing material through its solar wind out beyond the orbit of Pluto. We're literally living inside the sun's atmosphere, protected only by the Earth's atmosphere and geomagnetic field. At this point, astronomers can only give us about an hour's warning when a powerful solar storm is going to strike the Earth. But the hope is that a better understanding of the sun from the Inoue Solar Telescope, as well as the Parker Solar Probe and Solar Orbiter will give us two whole days of notice of an incoming solar storm so we can batten down our electronic hatches. So how does the Inoue Solar Telescope work? How do you focus the light of the sun with a four meter telescope without burning a hole in the side of your observatory? I'll get to that in a second, but first I'd like to thank Andy Cowley, Space Cat Gaming, Michael Stephen Bradley, and the rest of our 845 patrons for their generous support. Want to see your videos early? Get no ads on Universe Today? Join our community at patreon.com slash universe today. So how do you take images of the sun with this level of resolution? How does this telescope differ from one designed to take images at night? The primary mirror has a diameter of 4.24 meters, shaped into an off-axis paraboloid. Off-axis telescopes move the secondary mirrors out of the way to provide an unobstructed view of the sky. The mirror was cast in Germany, polished in Arizona, and then shipped to Maui, 
And right now, this is actually the largest single mirror off-axis telescope in the world, although it'll be eclipsed by the Magellan Telescope when it comes online in the mid-2020s. The light bounces off the main mirror and then goes into the secondary mirror. To stop this beam from destroying the telescope's instruments, there's a heat stop, a donut-shaped metal ring that allows only a narrow beam of light to pass through. Surrounding the entire observatory is the dome, which is covered by thin, actively cooled plates, which minimize the temperature difference between the dome and the air. Think about how the air shimmers above the road on a hot day. Shimmering is bad for telescopes. The mirror is mounted atop an enormous alt-azimuth mount that fills up the lower half of the dome. Light from the sun is focused by the main mirror to the secondary mirror and then down into all the science instruments below. 12 kilowatts of solar power is collected and focused by the main mirror, and this heat needs to be contained or removed. Inside the superstructure of the observatory, there are over 11 kilometers of piping that distribute coolant to keep its temperature stable. The observatory makes ice at night and then uses this ice for coolant during the day. The telescope is equipped with several instruments designed to study the sun at different wavelengths, as well as a spectrograph to break up the light into its individual components, revealing its chemical signatures. All of this relies on an adaptive optic system, which allows the observatory to compensate for the blurring of the Earth's atmosphere. This incredible picture was taken on December 10th, 2019, the first light ever seen from the telescope, which was recently completed. But the observatory still isn't complete, with three more instruments still getting installed. The telescope will be fully operational in July. We've talked quite a bit about the coming age of super telescopes, with Europe's extremely large telescope, the Magellan Telescope, and the 30-meter telescope, but solar astronomy has already beaten them to first light with their mega telescope. Thanks to the Daniel K. Inoue Solar Telescope, astronomers have a powerful tool that will let them study details on the surface of the sun with more precision than they've ever had. They'll be able to watch how small features like convective cells and sunspots relate directly to the larger solar weather we experience here on Earth. With better knowledge, we should be able to prepare ourselves better when the next solar storm is headed our way. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Here are the names of the patrons who support us at the $10 level and more. Want to see your name here, support the work we do? Go to patreon.com slash universe today. Once a week, I gather up all my space news into a single email newsletter and I send it out. It's got pictures, brief highlights about the story, and links so you can find out more. Go to universetoday.com slash newsletter to sign up. And did you know that all of my videos are also available in a handy audio podcast format so that you can have the latest episodes as well as special bonus material like interviews with me show up on your audio device? Go to universetoday.com slash audio or search for Universe Today on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And I'll put a link in the show notes. How bad can solar storms get? We did a whole video about the Carrington event, a solar storm that struck the Earth back in 1859. It was so powerful you could see auroras near the equator and telegraph poles caught on fire. And you can watch that video now.